once again, big shout out to all our returning viewers and also at the same time, new viewers. Welcome back to once again to our Corporate League Season 2, which of course this event is, is currently brought to you by the gaming company TGC. And of course, a big shout out to our sponsor, HP Omen. But most importantly, big question. Have you guys drink water? Have you? Have you guys drink water? Do you have a cup of water with you? Maybe a bottle? I don't know. Just drink it right now. We, guys gotta, we all got to stay hydrated, stay, most importantly, stay healthy because we have a responsibility to fight against this pandemic because a healthy body just makes it, keeps a peace of mind for all of our families and friends. But of course, I'm Lennon Lee, also known as Yolo Lee. I am going to be your MLBB caster throughout this entire season and I have been doing, I've been having fun the entire time. Look at this, seriously, look at the stage. Look at that intro, seriously. Well done coming from TGC, the production team. Seriously, they did a magnificent job. If I'm not mistaken, it is also, we are the first one to do it. We're the first one, yeah. We're number one. We're number one, yeah. TGC number one, baby. Woo! Let's go. And of course, and of course, right now, we're going to be checking out the weekly results to see what happened. And of course, the result of the previous game for, for those who just joined us on this stream to see what exactly went down. So, of course, during this week one, we had our first game, Shell against... Team Todak here, two to zero for a huge clean, clean up. Same goes for EGG Network is Udo Patronus against MDEC, and of course Accenture against PWC. And of course, the first game, if you guys missed out, and all those who were here, we saw a match, a big match between Media Prima against Bang Nagara Malaysia. They did, an, although kudos GG to all the teams here, and both the teams they did an amazing job, and of course. Of course, this is today's schedule. We already cast, or I already cast in the first match. Now we're going into the last match of the day, and that's between Mac Play and CGM. This is your current lineup. Look at this fantastic places here. Both are ready and riled up to go to see who can actually be taking that total prize pool here of 20,000 ringgit. Of course, the winner of the team will be walking away with 2,500 ringgit. And followed by 1,500 ringgit, and the last one will be 1,000 ringgit. Now that's actually pretty cool because I'm like, hey, that's a lot of money. And and the best part is all these corporates get to rekindle back their competitive side of themselves because you know what they say. You know there is a saying, an old dog can learn the new tricks, but but there are times where old dogs actually are the one that's teaching us the new tricks. But anyway, so our next game is going to be the last BO3 of the night. I'm actually excited to see how well they be, both of these teams are going to be playing because not only are they very simple, they are both involved in our esports industry, but they're also quite acquainted with each other. So a very friendly rivalry match between both of these teams here. But I just got a call from our, of course, 10 out of 10 TGC production that the drafting is ready and underway. So let's check this out. So CGM is going to be playing on the blue side. So in other words, they're going to be having the first pick and first ban. Followed by on the red side is going to be Matt Play. CGM on the other side, their team captain decides to ban up Yu Tong and Lao Yi. Like, hmm, okay, Yu Tong. Very strong fighter, a new hero that just came in. Understandable. Lowy, great lane harasser, great team fight, nuking as well. Your and also area okay. damage, banned out. Totally fine. On the other side here on Mac Play, they actually banned out the Belleric N11. Very interesting. Very interesting. Belleric has always been known as the kind of hero that is a Your great counter initiator. So, what? Who I am expecting to see. But because they banned out 1 1 and Balleric, and in my honest opinion, it's not really a high priority ban, they're going to be they're enabling two more priority bans or picks into the Your picking pool here. So, first pick is going to be on the side here of CGM, it's going to be the carry, followed by the Badang and Gado Kacha on the other side of the red team. Now, as you guys know, as you all know, Gado Kacha recently just got quite the buff for himself. Not that doesn't mean he's broken. That doesn't mean he's broken. He's just hurts way more than usual. He's a great initiator as well. So that's going to be quite the nail into, into CGM's plan if they were to choose to try otherwise. The last two picks is going to be Helios followed by the Sicilian. My lord, Sicilian. There's quite the amount of damage. There's so much actually. And, and also quite there's quite a commitment inside all those team fights. So I'm pretty interested on how they're gonna be countering against this. Last pick on the next side is gonna be Mac Play, it's gonna be Lunox here. Quite the amount of magic damage here. So now both teams have their Your side laners. They have their frontliners. What is cool is going to be 
their cores here. We already see the CGM, their hyper carry, it is going to be the carry. Magplay decides to ban out the, the Nana instead, but in my opinion, I think they should actually try to ban out the Angela a little bit more because Angela can be quite the boost for most of the teams here, especially any of the assassin pick as if CGM choose to go for because I like I said, it is the hyper carry meta. But but after witnessing the first game, there are times where we see actually two more hyper carries inside the game. A little bit greedy, but in the end, Media Prima was able to bring it to. But anyway, that was the previous game. Let's come back to the current game. CGM having the fear bans out the claw line. Let me explain. Let me explain a little bit why they ban out the claw. Mainly because claw is one of those marksman hyper carries that is not only is a very safe pick, but he's able to render any lane and any team fight pass. If he wants to get out, he wants to get in, he has his battle mirror image, he can get in and then get out with total ease and no one can actually catch up with him at all. Magplay is going to go with T-Long! Man, T-Long, I have not seen T-Long for the longest and longest than ever. Oh, CGM, baby! CGM, baby! I am, I'm sorry, I'm going to be a little bit, uh, I'm going to be a little bit afraid to a little bit because they went for the gamble. Not only did they pick the Angela, which is a really amazing main support, but they went for the Aldois. One of the most scariest, but at the same time, hardest carry to pull off the entire game because Aldois is the kind of hero where you need to farm. Farm and farm all the way to the late game. Get all those stacks until you become that one punch man which most MLBB players fear the most. So how are they going to do this? I'm very, I'm actually very curious. The Angela pick might be able to excel on the other team. Actually, now that I think about it, now since they picked the Sicilian as well, this means they're going to be dishing out as much damage as possible, giving as much pressure with it as well to allow and enable this Aldois to farm and stack up as much as possible. How will Mac play answer this? We are going to see on how they're going to be doing. They have quite the lineup too, but will they able to stop this Aldois as much as possible? Because literally right now, Mac play has only one goal and one game in mind, and that's just to hunt down Aldois as much as possible in the early game. By the way, I just got the call from our amazing TGC production. The game is underway. So ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly jump into the last BO3 of today here. The first match between CGM and Mac play. So still now, as usual, Everyone is just taking the time, taking their wills, trying to figure out how they're going to be countering out against them here. Ithril, by the way, uh, if I fail to mention, Mac played last pick, their last hyper carry, it is going to be the Ithril. Ithril, we have not seen her for quite a while, but she is quite the mobile marksman, followed by Zilong as well. Once he gets his ultimate, once he gets his item, he's going to be quite... It's gonna be quite the fighter to really stop and harass again. Soul Eater's gonna be on the side here. He's gonna be having quite the lane as well against both of these heroes. I just love the fact that Magplay decided like, you know, hey, we're gonna go with the two, we're gonna go with the two one two here since that's the existence of the Altois. We're gonna make sure we're gonna harass him out this lane and also ensure that we push this lane under this tower. That's just gonna make things a little bit more difficult for Soul Eater to stack up on that stacks. The opening on the timing on the, in the soap coming as we see in the middle lane as well. Majority of these heroes are still farming with ease and Stebo is going to be a tank fighter for Mac play here. He has, we have not seen exactly how well he's going to be doing this match here, but he is definitely going to be one of the strongest controllers in this game here because he is the gutter catcher and he's definitely going to be dishing quite the amount of damage with that blazing iron fist. But as you can see in the bottom lane doing quite the amount of harass, CGM is definitely warning them and saying like, hey, I'm the true threat here, not Soul Eater, not the old always. Come to me. And he's doing an exceptional job despite even being in this side lane. Now, Nyx94 is their marksman or tank, but in this game, he's going to be playing their frontline tanker with the Helios. And I think that's pretty great as well because that just literally amplifies the entire team here. This the entire team is literally like almost magic base here, magic base setup. So let's see how well they're going to be doing it. Shrine, on the other hand, is going to be on the side here, a CGM here. His Shrine, which is also known as Brian, is their marksman and tank, but this time he's going to be their hyper carry as the carry. Still pushing forward, each of them getting all their priority. I just have beautiful initiation, they're going to be catching up with the spinning like we are as well. Doing quite the amount of damage, Gilo does the spear flip, but that's not going to be enough, because that's just quite the amount of damage, and especially with the law and order, the lockdown from Nyx94, that's going to be enabling Shrine to dish out the entire, ma entire maximum damage. 
Now coming towards back to the top lane, although it's Soul Eater still having the time of his life. He's level 4, but he's not going to be in engaging in any of his team fights just yet. He really needs his farm, he really needs to stack up. So in other words, if Mech Play really want to try to counter this, they really should try to either force a fight once Scarlet Catcher hits level 4, or even just try to get as much objective as possible. Real thing on the side here, CGM, their support here, and of course with the Angela, she is going to be able to enable the team, even though despite most of the fight, I'm assuming most of the team fight is going to be 4v5, since Soul Eater is going to be split pushing and farming by himself. But with the existence of Angela, that's gonna make that's gonna be evening the odds here and leveling the playing field for the team here. Default gonna be committing with the unbreakable, trying to see if we can dish out a little bit more damage on Real Tank, but Real Tank is just heating so much back up with the love waves. Sandrine calls coming out from RF10 for a couple of trades to see if they can get the little wanderer for themselves. By the way, guys, if you guys missed out or have not been playing MLB for a long time, the little wanderer is actually quite useful as well because not only will you still get EXP from it, but you also can able to heal yourself and your lane creeps as well. So a pretty good, really cool pickup and a really easy creep, easy way of leveling up quickly. Real thing finally has her hard guard, has her ultimate, able to save and ensure their TV will not fall so easily into this entire game. Nightplay not doing any aggressive plays just yet. They're still playing by the book here. And I'm a little bit concerned because of this. Because if they continue to play this very... If both sides or decide to play a little bit more passive than Aldous or Soul Eater, by the time they hit late game, Soul Eater just might be just too strong for them to handle here. Since they don't really have much control besides the Spear Flip or the Avatar of the Guardians. Okay, Constanzo here, or Constanzo is going to be the marksman on mission for their Mac play. She is going to be the hyper carry of the team here. Beautiful, beautiful fist break by the way. Just going to be locking down and get the kill on Shrine. That was actually pretty big. If they got a kill on Nyx94, that is still probably fine. But because of the existence of Zee Long, he's able as a fighter, able to just instantly pinpoint and perfectly execute on a Pacific target. That's going to be a really great easy pickup on Shrine as he the only mobile skill he has is probably the Phantom Step. But I believe that Magplay was able to bait it out and that it literally enabled them to get the kill on Shrine. Top side, Ithril or Constanzo is doing a fantastic job just farming and also harassing a little bit on Soul Eater. But Soul Eater is still going quite strong. He needs to die a couple of times. Not, not really a big fan of the fact that I'm sure you can harass him all you want, but you really need to seal the deal here. Megan, Megan 17, Mac, sorry, Mac Gun, Mac Gun 17 on the other hand, is going to be getting the Blaze of Haptosis. That's going to be giving him, enabling him a little bit more damage here. And now he's going to be trying to engage. There's a Spear Fleet, there's a Spear Strike. Instantly shred him down. Both fighters instantly melt Shrine till next Tuesday. And Intero once again, my god, Constanzo is actually split pushing the lane so hard that Soul Eater doesn't really have any counter or even try to want to fight back. Still, let me careful, Mech Gun is getting ready to engage. Is the goes for the cause, going for the back line, F RF10. Does they have the ultimate, doesn't even have much mana either. But beautiful execution coming from Real Tank with the root of the puppets on the string. That's going to enable RF10 to stay alive a little bit longer, but not long enough as the Supreme Warrior Mech Gun is going to be pushed in. But looks like Soul Eater will no longer stand the fact to see his teammates fall one by one. But the Avatar of the Ancient will instantly pop down, instantly locks him down. That's going to be the end of Soul Eater and instantly a big pull coming up from the side of Magplay as they also will get the kill on Shrine. CGM not looking great at all. Dix94 try to see. He has to, he's quite tanky. Bobbing the Glorious Power to see if he's able to get another kill on my gun 17 to try to balance things out. But it's just too much of a loss has been committed towards that ball lane here. That's going to be quite the boost for the side of Magplay as currently they have 2.4k gold in the lead with three objective towers. Two of them actually being taken by Constanzo herself. Real thing, they just really need to play with the time here. I know, it's the game. They just need to drag it out, give a little bit more space for Soli to the farm up. It's a beautiful dash coming up from my Queen of Babylon. He had the Qigong Freeze as well to try to see if he can get up, but sadly the bad impact just does so much damage. He pops out the face crack, but it's, it's not enough to even defend himself or even try to retaliate back. Mad Gun pops up his ultimate, the Supreme Warrior is here. Every time the Guardian is going to be connected on two men. Steve gets ready, pops it down. Luna was able to do quite a amount of damage, followed by a bad impact. R of 10, no one's actually stopping him at all. Here comes Soli with the ultimate. Pops his face, able to get another stack for himself. Gets the kill, four men will fall. Beautiful 
execution and beautiful timing from all the members here. Although sadly, Consumption was not able to be there to support the team to dish out the amount of damage as herself as the hyper carry. But now things are slowly looking a little bit lower for both the team. But if we're talking about gold leads, Mac Play is definitely still in the lead here with two with almost a 3k gold lead and had four towers, four towers in the bank for themselves here. And don't forget about the turtles. RF10. RF10 did a fantastic uh, fight just now in the bottom lane that he knows his positioning can overextend. He needs to stand back as much as possible, but RF10 gets caught by Magan as he falls out the Supreme Warrior. Was able to shred down, but he needs to slowly kite them back. Here comes the ban impact. Almost going to be trying to pop down and make use of that max range as well. Try to small that out. Magan trying to see if he can find an opening. Here comes the Avatar of Guardian, but only will catch the tanker. And even real Tank, real Tank was not able to even pop up the hard guard. More members going to be pulled out, but sadly slowly the quite the amount of damage. RF10 tries to hold on the line, but Shrine gets caught by Constanzo. Constanzo gets a little bit down low, but they were able to trade off 4 4 1. Now that's what I call a big lead for the And Queen Babylon. Oh man, he's just chilling. He's chilling down the bottom lane, but that Sandry Claw does quite a amount of damage. Instantly chip a quarter of the HP of Queen of Babylon. Loving the name, by the way, Queen of Babylon. Just like, that's pure royalty right there, Kenneth. KN Square, Wall, also known as Wallace, the major tank in this game. He's doing quite a great job. Really great job doing the amount of harass as well as the Lunox. And the thing is this, right? They have. Steve has been an, an amazing initiative. Just constantly picking up members, ensuring they get the kill on either real team, their main time real team, or even the hyper carry. Here comes a bit of beautiful cash. Able to catch all three members of C CGM. That's a beautiful play. Although it's going to be coming to the ulti instantly. Pops! Back on, oh my lord, he disappeared in a second, but that's not able to counteract. Now they just have to try to hold this inhibitor. They don't really have to worry, Steve doesn't really have his ultimate either, so they can rest a little bit more easier as they hold this inhibitor and they fully defend it against Mag Play. Lord is here as well, the Lord is out. Let's see how they're going to be doing this against. I'm not sure whether they're going to be able to contest with this as well, although even though they know they. You know, even if they know that Macklin is doing a lot, there is no way for them to contest about this because their initiator is mostly towards the laning. It's not much of a great range compared to Steve over here. And they still really need that soul eater to just keep constantly stack his first skill. Because once he gets his stack up, then maybe they can try to turn this game around. But will Mac play even allow that? We'll sh we shall see in the next couple, in the next two minutes here. RF10 gets Bob of God, pops his ultimate. He's leaving with the spear flame. That's going to be allowing him to get. Actually, no, scratch that. He actually got turned around and was able to get the kill for himself. But he will fall to the side of Queen of Babylon here as he was actually able to do quite the amount of damage and allow KN Square to achieve the double kill. So it was pretty much, it was pretty okay with the trade for one for one. But, be but because it ends up being a one for two, as McGon had just enough items, he did quite the amount of damage in that early game. Was able to get the amount of damage and the amount of items. He is right now such a huge utility inside this game. Next 94, they need to try, but here comes the Avatar of the Guardian. Beautiful reaction coming from the side, from the side here, or Shrine and Real Thing as they hold it back. Pulse out, pulse out the hard guard, pulse out the Goyz Highway as well. Was able to get a nice kill on KN Square. Next 94 is still alive. Queen Babylon trying to pop out his Fist Crack. Was able to allow Constanza to get another kill for himself, and the Inhibitor will fall. Here comes Soul Eater, but he will cancel out his ultimate because he knows they just have too much damage and of course too much control with the existence of Megan. Should Megan not was not actually well equipped with items, then maybe Soul Eater wouldn't mind diving into the mix of things. But because Megan is quite big right now, he is considered a threat. And let's be honest, Soul Eater isn't really that tanky either. So the minute Soul Eater gets caught or gets locked down, that's pretty much the end of him. He's actually instead of eating souls, he's gonna have his own Soul Eater instead. Two inhibitors fall for the side here of C, G, and Mac play really making the plays here, fully utilizing what kits they have, what the ability of each of their heroes here, and of course they know what they needs to be done and instantly execute it perfectly. Real thing was able to get the fleet time for herself. That's going to be enabling her heart got to be off cooldown a little bit more faster than usual. But will it be enough? Two ta two inhibitors will fall to the side here on Mac play here as they slowly push for the final win. As they slowly push towards the final win. Mac gun in position, getting ready to jump in any time and any place. He's just waiting for the most opportune moment. 
and of course, the course that he wants to aim for because there is no way he wants to aim for Nyx94 but he could aim for him right now because he gets he's actually brought down half HP due to the harassing potential from both members of Mac Play's teammates. Now middle was able to kill beautiful face break instantly catches two members inside the wall, not able to be able to skill or even try to flick her out. Two members gonna be falling on the side of CGM. Macplay going straight for the throw. Constanzo doesn't care. He wants to look for the win here. She is trying to end it here and now RF10 popping a bad impact. Although it's on the head of Soul Eater, trying to get another kill. So does RF10. They will hold. Dropping down two members. Macplay, no choice but to fall back and having to risk and will not risk of the fact of a comeback. They still have the top inhibitor. The game is not over just yet. No super minions or super creatures yet. They have to chill. They have to wait. They have to find another opportune moment to punish. But either way, beautiful execution coming out from Queen Babylon with the fist break and the fist crack combo. Instantly melted. Like instantly melted two members of CGN. That was pretty big. But now they just had to play with the time here and try to push and create this inhibitor one by one. Or they can even wait for a little bit more longer because Lord is going to be coming out in exactly 18 seconds. It's just got to chill. RF10 realizing and I also love the fact coming from the rest of the team is here of CGM. They know they're, they're having their backs against the wall. But they know if they give this Lord to Mac Play, then it's gonna be the game just gets a little bit more harder in this defense. But Mac Play, they're not gonna go, they're not gonna go for the defense, they're not gonna go for the Lord. They're gonna try to go for the win, but the Sandrick calls and the bad impact instantly brought Queen Babylon down to a quarter of HP. Steve has to go for the run. Even more harassed. There's just so much damage coming up from RF10. Finally, they're finally getting their act back into this game here. They managed to delay it by slightly as well by reducing both Queen of Babylon and Steve down to HP, so they will not be able to take the lot anytime soon, but they will definitely get it very shortly. They're just currently preparing for it. Beautiful, beautiful animation coming from Shrine, but great reaction coming from KS. Gonna be popping up that is her ultimate able to escape, but it gets part up with the Spear Strike and Spear Flip. And that's going to be the end of their carry. That's going to be the end of Shrine. Now it's going to be down to a 4v5. And they can engage this if they wanted to. But it looks like not. Mac play want to play this long, the safe game, and possibly try to end this game properly as well. They're going to be getting this Lord. They're going to be calling in for him as well as they slowly run down this top tower and try to see if they hit this crystal before Shrine give a response back. 20 seconds on the clock. 20 seconds. Can they hold it up? But Sally Constanzo not going to allow the Islay pop off R10. Their wave clear potential, although yes, real thing can wave clear with the love waves, but it doesn't does enough damage enough compared to R10 bad impact and sanguine claws. Minions are going to be pushing down towards that mid. Lord is Lord is going to be coming down shortly as well. Now all he needs, all they need, is just a beautiful ultimate coming down from Galakar. The top of him is going to be falling down. That luminous Lord is going to be walking down that mid lane like a champ, getting ready to knock down the doors. Oh. Basically not really doors or basically what's left of CGM space. Gato Kacha, they, they really want to try to predict on who Gato Kacha is going to be initiating on with the Avatar of the Guardian. Waiting for him, they spot him out. Instinct crouching in here, got the Avatar of the Guardian. We're actually going to be catching all three into the fist break as well. Instantly disappeared, three members, real thing, had nothing on it. There was no hard guard, they could have popped anything and instantly the crystal gets shredded down and instantly disappeared from existence. My lord, they didn't even stand a chance. They want to try to retaliate back, but they just couldn't. So much CC, so much control. The tempo controller for the team coming from the side of Mac Play was exceptionally phenomenal. They just couldn't do anything about it. Although, sure, although CGM, I respect you guys because it's a really confident move to pull off an Aldois pick. And I love it. I love this place. I'm pretty sure all the viewers back at home, they love this aggressiveness as well. But anyway, let's go check out the scoreboard for the previous game to see how the itemization is coming from both of the team here. So, of course, Constanzo with zero death. She has not died at all. She did a fantastic job with her itemization as well. She went with the Raptor's Machete, followed by Wind Talker, Endless Battle, Berserker Furies, Yo, Constanzo is loaded. Not in just not in terms of financially, but of course all of her damage as well. Although it's the soul or in this case soul eater, he was able to bring out 
the Blade of Hepatosis, followed by the Endless Battle. And just look at this, just look at this amazing stats coming out from our observers. Thank you guys so much from TTC for doing this for us. You can definitely see the amount of damage dealt and of course the HP even given for most of the team. It's just absolutely insane. The final score of this game is of course going to be 26 kills against 13 sides here on Mac play. Oh man, just amazing. Really great play for this team here. Now, I wonder how... Mac, how CGM is going to react to react in game number two here because now they know quite the amount of offenses, amount of AOE, amount of control. They need to get serious if they really want to rack up all the points for themselves here as they go all the way to the summit. But anyway, we're going to be taking a short five minutes break to allow our players to, to relax a bit, drink some water, and reset before the next potentially either last match or comeback round. I'll see you guys in a bit. See ya.
Now that is what I am talking about for for, the, for a while now, even earlier as well, I did mention I have a little bit of expectation. I wanted to see a little bit of action, some old stress, because we're talking about corporates. We're talking about some old school people playing, but of course not all of them are old school. Some of them are still very young, of course. Don't I I'm so sorry if I if I accidentally call you old, but we are all that very young and still very fresh, okay? But either way. A lot of expectation, and I had one of my expectations answered, and that was that I'd always pick in that first game. Exactly, for all of you 
but once again just want to say before i explain welcome back once again to the corporate league season two currently just want a quick update to you guys we are currently in our last bo3 we had the first game just now between the mac play and cgm now i just want to just want to run it down for you guys. Macplay did an exceptional job playing, but so did so the CGM. But CGM did something, something amazing. They did this. They did something which you rarely seen for a long time. Very confident, very aggressive. I love it. They went for the Aldois pick. Really great. I totally respected that. Not many players had the com even among esports teams. Not many of them have the confidence or even the will to pick such a dangerous pick in such an opponent. But anyway, this is the drafting, the final game between MacPlay and CGM. This time, MacPlay they're gonna be on the blue side. So in other words, to remind you guys again, they will get first ban and first pick. First ban going on the side here. MacPlay once again getting rid of the one one. Is it the final game? I'm not sure, ladies and gentlemen. Who knows? You know, let's find out. Let's find out. I want to know, but you know, I re I do not really want to jump the gun just yet, you know, because you know, CGM, maybe they were flexing. Your you know, that first game, they're like, you know, we'll flex, you know, we'll flex our skills, we'll pick our outdoors, let's do this, right, that kind of thing. But anyway, once again, Mac play gonna go Your with the same bands which they had for the previous game, which was the one one and the bell ring. So why are they gonna go for this time? On the side here, a CGM. Oh, they fear. They fear that. <laughs> <laughs> Fear that Idril instantly bans around and does this time another priority ban, very commonly banned not just in season 4 MPL but of course in, CPL, in MPL season 5 and MPL I and that's the Natalia mainly because not only is she a very sneaky assassin but she's able to not only sneak up against you and silence you but she has a skill called Smoke Bomb where once you throw it down inside in the middle of a team fight you cannot hit her yeah no matter how many times you want to pull all kinds of damage on top of her you can't do anything instantly natalia gets banned out and the first pick coming out of the mac play is going to be a valero i love it they're literally mac play is literally sending a message a message to cgm saying that you want us you can come and get us i'll burn you I'll roast you before you can even try to get to my back line. And that's why you see Valero pick very commonly picked among our esports powerhouses over across Southeast Asia. CGM on the other hand, they're gonna be first two picks. It's gonna be the Kufra and the Farsa. Ooh, I love it. I haven't seen Farsa today. And of course, Farsa, another commonly pick. So does the Kufra. Both very favorable picks inside of our recent MPLI Farsa mainly because you have a really great mage support backliner not only does she does great lane harassing but she has her ultimate feather ash strike from a safe distance from a long way literally very far away she can bombard you and you just can't do anything about it because you have a Kufra that's in your face you can't do anything about it oh my god here's CGM I thought they're gonna be flexing again but nope they are not gonna be flexing I saw the although I was like oh man are they gonna flex it again no way man I mean, that's like, that's strong, man. I, I love the flex, I love the aggressiveness, but no. They decide to play a little bit more safe, they, go, they will not pick the Aldois. But Mac play, they're gonna go with the Leslie and the Gardo Kacha. I mean, you know what they say, if it ain't Your broken, don't fine. fix it. They've been doing exceptionally well with it, work with it. They're gonna be doing great. So now, final bands here. CGM, once again, fearing the Badang. Although, sure, early game may not have been easy. Was well, definitely not easy for for Mac plays Badang just now. But once he managed to drag the game towards the late game, he got a couple of items for himself. And on the long side with Zilong, they were able to just melt players one by one. Macplay once again going to be banning the exact same bands. Three exact same bands. The 1-1, one, one, the Bell Rig, and the Nana. Your team very interesting, very picking. interesting to be. So in other words, more priority picks and more priority bands are still open in the pool. CGM decides their Freya. hyper carry is going to be the Granger. Woo, Freya! Man, the goddess, the North Goddess, North Goddesses herself here on the land of Dawn. My gosh, she is going to be blessing, but at the same time, dishing out so much damage onto the most of the team here on CGM. And Mac play once again, got to lock it down with the Luna. So now, final, now, final pick coming from the side of CGM. Atlas is in the pool, though. Atlas is in the pool. They can go for the Atlas or the Angela or the Rafaela. Three is an amazing pick here. Which will they go for? Rafaela is great, you have healing, you also get, does quite the amount of damage with both Holy Healing and Holy Baptism. Angela, you got a lane harasser at the same time, a great control skill with Pop of the String, and you got a hard guard that can defend your team from global. By the way, yes, I'm going to remind you guys again, Angela's ultimate hard guard is global.
global. So she can globally save a person, give it a amount of shield, and quite the boost for herself in any sticky situation. Now we have our lineups. Both teams, Magplay and CGM. Magplay is currently in the lead with, with, one, with one point, one to zero. This is the best of three. This game can go either way. But is it going to be a clean 2-0 or is it just going to be a comeback round for CGM? That's up to you guys in the viewers section. Do comment down in the comment section below on who do you want, who in which team do you want them to win. Really seriously guys, seriously, while you're at it, while you're doing it, like this page, share it, follow it, do what you guys got to do best and support this corporate league season 2 because we really need all the support we can get. By the way, I believe uh, our amazing production just Gave me the call that the game is ready, so let's quickly jump into the let's quickly jump into the mix here between possibly either the final or comeback Smash game them. between Mac Play and C G M. So pushing for Stevo once again, he's gonna be playing his one and only Gato catcher. He has been doing quite an amount amazing job with it. Constanzo is gonna be following it in the same lane of topside with Kinetics. So this time they're gonna be doing a simple two one two. 2-1-2 two, two here in the lane here, Kufra being the sh Shrine, this time Shrine is not going to be playing the Hyper Carry, he is going to be playing the Kufra. RF10, this time he was playing an amazing Sicilian, he knows his positioning, he knows his job, and with the Farsa, I believe that is going to amplify his fundamentals even more. Nyx94 previously was the tanker, and but also at the same time, he can also play as the Hyper Carry, as the Marksman. So this time, Kinetics is into the mix here. He's also known as Kenho, who is the assassin of the team here. But with Freya, the goddess, of the North goddesses herself, he's going to be doing quite the amount of damage. And of course, if you guys are not sure what, what Freya can do, she can actually pull out with quite the amount of CC if you're actually caught without any teammates assisting you. Nick 94 comes to the lane here. He has a grand to try to clear out this wave alongside with Real Ting. Real team was playing the Angela in, that, in the previous game, but sadly she was not able to commit a lot into the team fight with the hard gun because there was just too much control from the side of Magplay. By the way, coming down, we might be seeing a potential first blood here from the side here. RF10 popping out the bird transformation, trying to find a kill. Commits, commits the energy impact, followed by the curse of Crow, and will be able to draw first blood here on Constanzo. And that is actually pretty big. That's actually pretty big, pretty cool for them. That's going to be giving them a burst in the XP and also gold. On the other side here, Megan17, who was previously the Jilong, who he did an amazing job with Jilong, by the way, if I do say so myself. Currently, he's going to be playing the Hyper Carry for this round. He has already hit level 4. He is currently leaning against Soul Eater, who was playing the Aldois in the previous round. He did a great job, too. But because, you know, Aldois is a very risky kind of play, you have a heart, you have a condition of trying to win the game back. And in this case, Magplay just only utilized it. By the way, beautiful execution coming from the side of RR10 with a better airstrike. Able to assist to get a kill for Soul Eater. And that's gonna be cool and pretty nice for himself. So currently the scores here, we see CGM this time. It is their turn to be on the offensive since Magplay was so offensive with them in the previous game. Since they had the Aldoras, now the tables has turned. But how long will they be able to maintain this momentum? Because let's just let's just look for the side here. Next 94 is already level 5, but rating is only level 2. Gonna be hitting level 3. But that's gonna be against two players here, Constanzo and Kinetic, who's who's already about to hit level soon. 4. But the amount of damage, Shrine is getting ready to assist him. We're, we're going to be careful as well. Instantly engaged with Tyrus Revenge. Here comes the bouncing ball. Let's go to literally prevent connecting from even trying to bounce away. Here comes the Feather Ash Strike. But Freya was Freya himself was able to get a kill on Nyx94 before even going down. It was literally a support, a side laner for a core, for a hyper carry core. Not sure whether that was a good trade or not. But I say they will have no choice, but they accept it for now. KN Square is going to be committing ultimate as to run away to not give any more opportunities towards the side of CGM. By the way, that was the first kill off for this game here for the side here of Mac Play. More kills to come for sure. But to see on whose side is going to be hitting the advantage first. Steve Arresting Shrine really we're gonna be careful as well as RF10 is here with the energy impact, followed by the Feather Air Strike, beautiful Tyrant Revenge and Rage! And it's just gonna allow RF10 to get another kill for himself and possibly even the little wonder. Kinetics still farming out that top lane. He knows what he needs to do. He knows Ken Ho. He definitely needs to, he knows what he needs to be doing. He has to farm up, try to dish out and try to harass against this Granger. Although, yeah, sure. They were able to manage to get a pick off on Nyx94. That was pretty cool, that was pretty big. But they need to get a little bit more. 
One time is not enough. They need to go for more rotation, more ganks. That's exactly what CGM is actually doing in this game. They're going all serious. RF10 does quite a lot of damage to Constanzo. She has no choice but to fall back. Soul Eater already has Bloodlust Axe, and he is about to go to town on Lessie in the bottom lane. Should Lessie is not careful because the crow is going to be committed towards Steeple. Even more lane harassing. Mid tower will fall though towards the side here for Max Play. That's going to be the first tower here. And. Let's see who's going to be taking the first tower. Bottom tower, not looking too great either. Soul Eater trying his best to hold up against, against McGann, but McGann is Leslie, so he's going to be doing quite a amount of rest. And of course, we cannot forget about Steve -O, who is the kind of the Kinetics on the top lane. Getting quite a hit amount of things, 94. Ne Kinetics, if he knows he, if he's going to go down, he's not going to go down alone. Still was able to get the trade off, not even the trade off, was able to get the kill on real thing, literally thing. Like, hey, you want my life, my life is expensive. But anyway, Soul Eater was able to find McGann, engage it towards his bot lane. Shrine is the Apostle Flicker, goes with the Tyrant of Red. Beautiful combo, by the way. Every time the Guardian, Steve had to use it to back off, but it's not going to be enough because Soul Eater definitely trying to look for more. Steve flickers away to safety, and everything is going slowly by its pace. Nick, by the way, just on the add on, Nick94 was able to get his Raptor's Machete. So he's still going to be able to farm out even faster in the jungle. Shrine charging up the Tyrant's Revenge, was not able to connect, but that's pretty much fine. It's fine. Because let's be honest, we have this saying in games where it's not about the ganks, it's about sending a message. So you can definitely tell Shrine is just sending a message like, hey, you want me, I'll come and get you. Constanzo gonna be careful and instantly falls out with the Tyrant Rage and Bouncing Ball. No escapes for Constanzo this time, as this 94 is gonna get on his first kill in this round. RF10 gonna be careful, my gun did quite a lot of Ooh, chipped off instantly a quarter of his HP. Now let's see how well MacPlay is gonna be trying to make the plays. For themselves here. Can square. This time he's his turn to hold up this top lane against the Grand because it's gonna be a little bit difficult. But Feta Ash, a beautiful hole coming from the shrine here. About Avatar of the Guardian is he drops down and catches RF10. RF10 was able to transform and back up away. Megan is the Posse Ultimate, trying to shield him as much as possible. Actually, Nick 94 let one shot get away, but they were able to flick out and get away alive. Lose up Can square on the other hand, still will not let even one go. Will actually take two lives before they hit back into the lane and they even took the red buff for themselves and even a potential first turtle in this game. Mac play when it comes up to positioning and perfect executioning, Mac play really shows it all. Out front and clear but although CGM they have a great especially really kudos to Shrine though. He's his rotation on the side here of RF10 was absolutely insane. He knows he constantly go for the gas and just keep catching players one by one. It's really unfortunate in the last fight, they were in a good position to fight against Mac Play inside the jungle. RF10 was able to get another item for himself. He's going to be amplifying his spells even more. Constanza was able to connect the flame shot. That's going to be able to drop down the Siri Torrent. Pops out the transformation. But here comes the Tyrant's Rage. Is he holding them down? Can okay, try to run away? But the Death Sonata followed by the Feather Asteroid. There's just too much damage. And now it's going to be coming down to a 4 to 4. Shrine had to sacrifice himself, but I'm pretty sure he is totally fine with it. They're able to hold this defense for this second tier tower here. But Stevo, remember Stevo. He is the play. He is the controller here. The team fight initiated here with the avatar or the guardians. He's ready to jump in at any time. Just waiting for McGann to get into position and just do a little bit more harass. McGann passes all of it. Trying to see if he does a little bit more damage. Each three members literally shielding RF10. Now that's why I call true team play. Steve was doing quite a amount of harass. This 94 gonna be careful. Flame shot. They collect no chance. About to flicker out for safety. Kinetics almost catch him as well. But now slide now Kinetics is, is gonna be punished for it. Trying to be pushing down, Steve gets caught. Every time he connects and catches all three. Connecting so was able to turn around on Salt Eater, getting the kill for himself. But on the other side, well played to Steve. He got caught, got harassed, initiated back in, and was still able to get out of that situation alive. He bought the time needed for his team to actually punish Salt Eater, who was solely chasing down Connectics. Excited for Real Team was able to still get another book for ourselves. And when it comes down to objective, look at how the ties has turned. Just not recent, previously in the early game, we saw the score was actually 2 to 0, and now we're looking at an 8 to 9. Score looks even now, but when it comes down to Tower's objective, let's be honest, Mac Play is definitely on top of that list with 5 towers, and of course, there are almost 5k in the lead. Looks like a stream. 
Brian was able to find Steve -O. Instead, pops out the bouncing ball, but suddenly he's a little bit too alone and away from home. No team in there to back him up this time. Gets punished for it too. And now it's going to be down to a 4 to 5. Last day, those endings 94 really trying to pop out the rest solo and Rondo to see if he can save his life against that Leslie's ultimate. A couple of trades, a couple of harasses coming from both of this team here. Nothing happened so far, but really great man to get the pick up on Shrine. Alone is out though. But see, it looks like Mac play is gonna be delaying the law a little bit because they really want to try to go for that luminous lord instead. Magon pushes forward to see if he gets the kill for himself, but actually it looks like Magon overstep his position. Overextending too, Isley gets punished for it and is there a beautiful pickup for the team here for CGM. Now they have no choice but to back off. Death timer for the side here of Mega is 22 seconds though, so she's gonna be out for a couple of seconds. So if CGM wants to make a play, they have to try to make the play now. But CG, G, CGM, they want to play a little bit more safe, focus on getting more farm and getting a little bit more control back inside the jungle. KN Square re realizing this and I love the fact the majority members of Mac play are currently positioning themselves to contest for this Lord. The Lord is going to be getting that little slot very shortly as well. Next 94 charging up and we can see Connect is just constantly split, pushing, trying to see if he can force them to to force them to break up the rest of the members of CGM. So when they, when they start the next team fight, then it's going to be a little bit more advantageous for the side here of Mag play. Looks like Ice Cream 1 is going to be received for the side here of RF10. RF10 has not, not done all, and his positioning and his execution of skill is just phenomenal. But ooh, Magano, that one tap there, almost just took, almost took a whole chunk of the HP of RF10. Not just about to fall back, but he's instantly going to heal back up and getting ready to fight. Or potentially the one fight that's going to be determining on the positioning. Oh no, Shrine actually going to be committing the Tyrus Revenge. Will not be able to connect and actually gets overextended. They have no tankers at all. He has to try to get back to back to base alive as much as possible. Get shredded out. Flicker out and will be able to get out alive. That's his ultimate. They had to shield him. They had to protect him as long as possible. Shrine cannot fall. Devo is also a little bit low, but he has his ultimate. The game changing skill here that, to, that can actually catch up towards that back line. Ooh, literally talk about clo a little bit too close for comfort, ladies and gentlemen, because that situation was literally not comfortable for most people. Yeah, it's going to make gone, 17. Was able to shred out Shrine again. R10 going to be committing for the airstrike to really quickly and efficiently clear out their lane because they really want to try to ensure that not all the lanes are being pushed at the same time for the next engagement. Connectus gets caught, here comes the Curse of Crow. Followed by him, followed by Soli, the falls is in, comes the ultimate, but RF10 is getting clean from behind, but they just have the right amount of damage to catch it. Shrine getting a little bit overconfident, goes in with the Tyrant Rage, sorry, goes in with the Tyrant Revenge, was able to pick up and actually gets punished by a little bit. Not dead just yet, but RF10 gets caught by the Avatar of the Goddess. Beautiful comeback for the side of Steve-O. He was finally able to catch the person he was trying to look for. Now there is no way clear. They can try to clear out the waves, but without RF10, it's not going to be that easy. Shrine gets tagged a little bit. That's the crit. Ooh, and let me tell you, remind you guys, Shrine is the tanker. And the fact that he got critted to almost like half HP, that's ridiculous. Magon is absolutely insane. They have a chance to go for the Lord without anyone to contest. And the best part about it, it is the Luminous Lord. So even more stronger than the previous one, and of course it's gonna make this game even more harder for CGM to defend against. Gotta be careful. Magon doing quite a amount of crit. Ooh, just look at the amount of crit counters on top of that Lord. Even on the endless battle on the side here of Kinetics. Although yeah, sadly Steve is gonna be full fall here, but that's just enough as oh Magon did quite a amount of damage, but sadly he has to fall back because he actually got caught. On the side here of Constanzo still looking forward. Shrine, he has to fall back. He has to try to assist the team here because Kinetics is going absolutely insane. The back line has fallen. The front line is gonna fall as well. The formation is broken. He's gonna be trying to come in and try to escape from this kind of situation, but there is nothing he can do. Here comes Leslie's ultimate, gonna be coming to bouncing ball, but he's already safely inside the fountain. He's gonna be healing for safety, and now the mid, mid inhibitor will fall. Will Shrine be able to defend this against it? I'm not sure about it because Kinetics has already, already has her endless battle. She's gonna be dishing up true damage, and that's exactly what happened on how she shredded that backline. The Lord is here. They're hitting the crystal. The timer is just too long. They're gonna be hitting the crystal. Looks like Mac Play is gonna be taking game number two here. Last game of tonight here of this best of three. Mac Play close it out with two to zero. Of course. 
Kudos to both teams. Really, really well played and well done from the team here. CGM, they did it all the way. They tried their best. They fought with all their might. But Mac play is just making all the plays. And of course, securing the deal. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly check out the scoreboard to see what do we have here for the itemization coming from the both of these teams here to see what we can see. Alright, so on the side here of Mac play as usual, because he is the hyper carry marksman, he decided to go for the Raptors machete. That's going to be enabling him to scale towards that jungle to allow him to earn a little bit more than usual. He also had a lot of wave clearing skills with the Wind Talker, Berserker Fury, and of course the damage with the Endless Battle. But on the other side here, RF Ted, just insane amount of damage. Just really unfortunately, beautiful, beautiful flank coming up for Kinetics. The minute Kinetics hit, that item timing, the minute he hit that endless battle, that was his prime moment. That was him literally saying, I am going to shred your back line. And that's exactly what happened. He literally man up. The front lines was doing a great job zoning out the Leslie and everyone else. But there was no one to control Kinetics, who was a Freya, instantly popping the ultimate, instantly popping all his skills. And with the endless battle, no problem, no problem. It just, it just reducing reducing the backline to to a very minimal amount. Now both of this, of course, today's both of this, all the four teams we have casted for this game, each of them did a fantastic job. Some very obvious, some very obvious plays, which you can definitely see on screen, but everyone played exceptionally, everyone had, but most importantly, everyone had fun. Everyone had fun. So, First things first, uh, before, before we close it out, I just want to give a big shout out to our sponsors, HP Omen for our PC sponsor. And of course, this entire event is currently brought to you by the gaming company TGC. And of course, guys, seriously, before you leave, like the page, share it, follow it, supporters. And of course, and of course, ma and of course, making sure to literally just tell everyone, like, hey, you know, TGC did an, an, an amazing intro. They're the first one they did, the first one. That's right, first one, all right? So, of course, I'm going to be calling off. I'm going to also know as you already. Don't forget to drink water. And I'll see you guys this Saturday for the PUBG Mobile Tournament for the Corporate League Season 2.